you have proven com across the square root function while coding, right? This function is predefined in the library and all set for us to use whenever needed. Just plugging in any value into the brackets and assigning it to some variables gives the required root, isn't it? But have you ever wondered how it actually works? How does a computer crunch those numbers and find the square root of a given value? What if you were given to find the square root of a number? The natural thing to do would be randomly guess and see if squaring gets close. Another approach would be breaking down a number into factors and finding the squares within. There are even more methods, but can we use any of these in computer programs to find roots? Unfortunately, these methods might not be practical or efficient when it comes to computers. Fortunately, there exist alternative methods such as binary source and Newton Raphson method. In this video, we will talk specifically about one of the fastest and most efficient ways used in today's computers to calculate square roots, called the Newton Raphson method. However, it's important to note that Newton Raphson method isn't solely for square roots. It's a broader concept. Named after Isaac Newton and Joseph Raphson, this method helps approximate the roots or zeros of any real value function. We will later explore how this method can be applied finding square roots, but first, let's understand how it is in finding general roots. Picture this. Graphically, Root means the point where graph of any function called six axis. To find the root, we start off with a guess value, x0. We draw a tangent line at this point, which intersects the x axis at another point, which we will call x1. You might notice x1 is closer to the root than x0. Now, we keep going, drawing tangents and finding new x intercepts. As we repeat this process, each tangent brings us near to the root. And here is the exciting part. If we keep doing this infinitely, we will eventually hit the bullseye and find the exact root we are after. Now, how can this method be used to find the square root then? Let's say we are to find the square root of a. We can utilize the function x squared minus a, which has its root at the square root of a. Applying the newton raphson method allows us to find the root of this equation with a. Starting with a guess value x0, we trace the tangent line to its intersection with the x-axis at x1. Can we predict x1 using just x0? Yes, we can. Let's establish a mathematical relationship between them. The slope of tangent at x0 is represented by f dash x0. By rearranging the variables, we arrive at this equation. For this case, fx0 is equal to x0 squared minus a, and f dash x0 is equal to 2x0. After further simplification, we obtain our new guess value, x1. Likewise, if we repeat the process with a tangent at x1, our next value becomes this. This iterative method continues steadily converging towards the square root. In general, the relationship between the next and present guess is this. This iterative formula fine-tunes our estimation with each step bringing us ever closer to the precise square root. Since we now have our formula, let's put into test using an example. Consider the task of finding square root of 5. We will begin with an initial guess, say 4. Applying Newton Epson method, our first approximation would be 2.625. But we are not stopping here. Now that we have our improved approximation, we can repeat this process to get an even better estimate. We will use this latest approximation x1 as our new starting point. Calculating further, our new approximation becomes 2.62488. We can continue this process further to achieve an even more accurate result. It might seem a tedious task for humans. In practice, computers perform these calculations swiftly 
iterating numerous times to obtain highly precise square root approximation. Well, then let's try to implement it in programs then. Let's create a special function called square root that needs a number a as input when the root is to be determined. Inside this function, we will begin by making a first case. Since case can be any number, we can simply set our case to be a. Now comes the interesting part. We keep updating our guess value step by step using the notion we discovered earlier. The guess equals 0.5 times guess plus a over guess. We will keep doing this until our guess is almost the same as the actual square root. How do we know when to stop? We use while loop under the condition as long as our guess squared minus a is bigger than a very small number, we will keep going. In my case, I want the answer to be precise of 10 decimal places. So if guess squared minus a still bigger, we keep going. Finally, we return the ultimate guess value. Now, let's put our square root function to the test by finding the square root. We will do this by printing the square root of 16 and running the program. And here you have it. The output is indeed full. To further demonstrate, let's check another difficult example finding the square root of 2. For verification, you can cross-check the results using the calculator. While program itself might appear small, it's actually connected to the immense realm of mathematics. This kind of illustration helps us grasp the deep connection between math and computer. So, the next time you encounter the square root function, you can recall the journey we have embarked upon. Until then, keep exploring. And if you found this mathematical journey intriguing, remember to show your appreciation by liking and subscribing to our channel.